John. It's a tail, your choice, John. Okay, thanks. First frame. Judd Trump to break. Tuesday tea time, the perfect time to settle down for a double helping of Judd Trump. Later on, we'll see him face Mark Williams. First up, he takes on Joe Perry. And he comes into the match in very good form on the basis of his performances earlier today. He's won both of his matches, lost only one frame. And he's made a break of 63 or above in all six of the frames that he's won. Joe Perry has had a mixed day. Lost his first match, 3-1 to Dave Gilbert. Won his second against Ben Wollaston by the same score. Yellow ball. Joe Perry won. And speaking of Wollaston, he's just starting out on the other table against Ricky Walden. So I'll keep you posted on that one as well. Trump acknowledging his good fortune and the kiss on the brown, getting him in behind the green. Trump for. The glancing escape off two cushions, always such a difficult shot, but in this situation, it's hard to see much other option for him. Okay. A bit wow. closer that time. Judge Trump for. Catch it slightly too thick, he's almost certainly going to leave something. Foul, no miss. To Trump for. Trump for. And we could be here a while yet. I don't see Trump taking on a long red. I think he believes that through good fortune as much as anything else, he's got Perry in a lot of trouble here. Okay. And that eventually, chances are when Perry finally does make contact, he will give Trump a chance. But in the end, Perry's played that really well. Okay, he's given away 16 points and penalties, but I think he'll regard that as a price worth paying. Wow, that was a long, long way out. 
for a red that was so close to the pocket. The start Trump has made in this group so far quite similar to the last group where he started off Eight. like an absolute train. He won all four of his matches on the first day of the group for the loss of only one frame. Nine. Just relentless heavy scoring all day. Albeit that he then ended up getting beaten in the group semi-final. Twenty-four. There was a little bit of manoeuvring to be done to get himself into a, a really good scoring position here, but he's done that now. Given the way he's been clinically exploiting his chances today, 32. Every possibility he could win the frame here. 33. Remember, this is his first scoring visit. The 16 points he had before this break all came from Perry's four successive misses. So this to lead by 79, with 75 left, 64, 65. And this all came from Perry's fairly poor attempt at that red from distance that was over the corner pocket. bring out the red on the side cushion here. Well, not taking that opportunity. We will need both 80. remaining reds. Well, sorry, he'll only need 
you need this red and one of the other two remaining reds if he is to make a century and he's judged that to perfection 96 Well, Brendan Moore says Harry. that Trump hit the brown first. Trump, not so sure. It doesn't really matter. It does deprive him of the century. Let's have a look. Mm, I think he's got that right. Trump didn't feel that he had committed a foul. But on second look, I don't think it's conclusive, but it does suggest that Brendan Moore has got that one right. So... No century for Trump, but the 96, a very positive way to start, and he leads Joe Perry, 1-0. Oh, now, it looks as though Ben Wollaston is going to take the opening frame here. Wollaston already at the snooker's required stage, even before that black went in. He was a late call-up for this group, Ben Wollaston. Only got the call over the weekend. Wasn't due to come in until Group 7. But now he's potentially got three chances to make the winner's group. He's been in the winner's group before, three years ago. He actually won the first Championship League group that he ever played in. Ended up uh, coming within one frame of getting to the Championship League final that year. So he's good memories of this tournament. Second so he might be able to do what Trump didn't quite manage here and start with a century. But Trump did win the first frame and he leads as Perry gets us underway in frame two. I did wonder when Trump was playing onto that red whether or not he could actually get to the potting angle past the brown. He obviously felt he could, and indeed he felt he had. Anyway, all fairly academic now. Trump in an increasingly strong position in this group to get through to the semi-finals. Remember from the six matches, it is theoretically possible to get through with two, but it very rarely happens. Generally need at least three wins. And if you do get to three, it usually comes down to a frames count back. It is mathematically possible to win four of your six matches and still not make the semi-final, but it's never actually happened. Just to let you know, Ben Wollaston did complete the century on the other table in winning the opening frame against Ricky Walden. This not entirely dissimilar to the position Perry was in and playing those four successive misses in the previous frame.
the roll-up shot was at least an option this time but I think he's left one and possibly even two reds on if he was going to play that shot he had to judge it just right one and Trump could be off and running again I think he is on this red to right corner but awkward queuing very tricky having to bridge over two different sets of two reds which were actually quite some distance apart so his hand his bridging hand was a long way from the cue ball well, he's had a bit of luck there and he knows it but the bottom line is he's in prime scoring territory here only took one scoring visit to win the first frame no reason why well, he can't do the same again in the second. Thirty one. Thirty nine. We always say in a situation like this it's hard to see what can go wrong but still a lot of shots to be played, you can always get a bad contact or just fractionally misjudge the positional side of a shot. But really the way Trump's been playing today, it will be a surprise 47. if he doesn't make this contribution, a frame winning one. 48. Fifty-five. Fifty-six. 
63. Don't think this was the red he played on to. He was playing on the one to the opposite corner and 64. you see just a slight misjudgment on a positional shot left him with a more difficult red and as a result he's got a more difficult black for frame ball than he would have expected. And consequently he's not over the line yet. can happen to Trump sometimes when he gets into full flow. It, it's all coming so naturally to him. You wonder, does he just lose just that one percent of focus that causes him to be slightly one out of position? And then you saw it built up over. A couple of shots. Perry, who must have... Twenty-four. Twenty-five. So he's left the angle, but it's still going to be difficult to move this red. Well, that was a decent effort, but just hit it too hard. Now, 32. He has to make the decision whether or not to attempt it to the yellow pocket. Joe Perry, 32. Well, he took a lot of the risk out of it by playing it in such a way that he wasn't going to be leaving it over the pocket if he missed. Trump's still definitely favourite to win the frame. He only needs the red. Perry would have to clear, and of course that would involve taking care of that awkward green. probability Trump is going to get the red he needs. So put him 33 in front. He just seemed to queue across that and he does have a tendency to do that a lot of the time which is against everything you're supposed to do but there it was a little more pronounced than usual for my money.
And so Perry battles on in the frame. Joe Perry six. So that reduces the gap to twenty six, which means Trump no longer no longer needs only the last red. He'd need a colour off it as well now. There, pretty much spot on. The mark. pink, however, is definitely wrong. And you can see that illustrates it very well. That way. Yeah. Thank you. Well, our picture suggests the pink is definitely wrong there. I'm not sure. I think we'd need to see that again slow down a bit, but I don't think it made any difference. I don't think it uh, assisted in Trump's attempts to hit the red. But certainly the picture suggested the pink was in the wrong place.
as Perry misses that long red. I should point out that Brendan doesn't have access to those pictures. Oh, surely he's not fluked at one. And what a bonus that he has the simplest black. Now he's dead straight on it, so almost impossible to get on the yellow. In fact, he's decided just to play the snooker. He did have the option to do that because he didn't need a colour. Still enough there for him to win. Foul. Well, yes. Joe Perry for. More off. Yeah. Yeah. Okay with the white. And that four point uh, penalty means that uh, the yellow will no longer be enough for Trump. He'd need the green as well now. all of this is happening because Trump was fractionally out with a positional shot about 10 minutes ago when he was looking almost certain to win the frame in a single scoring visit. Gradually lost position, ended up missing frame ball black, which was more difficult than it would have been had he played the positional shot correctly. A couple of shots before that. Could well have been well into the third frame by now. If he does attempt the yellow to the right hand balk pocket, it would require a positional shot to get on the green, which even by his standards would be quite something. So he's played the double well. That's very well spotted. And it's almost certainly going to win him the frame. Well, he looked like he had it won ten minutes ago. Ended up having to battle for a while longer. Nine. But the net result is the same. Fourteen. Joe Perry has won his last two matches against Judd Trump. He's going to have to win all of the last three frames if he's to do it again this time, because Trump leads by two frames to nil. Over on the other table, Ricky Walden has won the second frame against Ben Wollaston, so it's won all there now, and they're in the early stages of frame three. I was talking to Ben earlier today and uh, from chatting to him about his involvement it's clear how important Championship League is to players at his sort of level down in the 20s and 30s in the rankings obviously a good chance to earn some decent prize money over a couple of days and also the chance to play even if it is just best of fives a series of matches against some of the very best players in the game.
and he was absolutely delighted to get the call a couple of groups earlier than expected. Wasn't supposed to come in until group seven. But he won't be delighted with that shot because he's left Walden a chance. It's not been a good day for Ricky Walden so far. Just jump to break. He's lost his first two matches and only won two frames in the course of them. Very different day though for Judd Trump. He's only lost one frame across two and a bit matches. And he's closing in here on his third straight win. Wow, Trump for. I think relatively speaking he wasn't even really near hitting that red. That was a three ball plant he was attempting. Wow. And it's all gone wrong. Beautiful. Yeah, three ball plant. He almost fluked one in the opposite corner. One. And from that uh, easy starter. Perry's made a little bit of a mess of that. Joe Perry won. This is a meeting of the first two winners of the Championship League. Joe Perry, the inaugural winner, ten years ago now. And then Judd Trump won it at his first attempt while he was still a teenager in 2009. The first of three times he's won it so far. mentioned earlier that Perry has won the last two matches between these two. They've not actually played for almost two years, which is surprising, given the number of tournaments there are on the circuit nowadays. The last meeting was in the Welsh Open 2016. Perry won in a decider, 4-3, and their last meeting before that was in this tournament also in 2016. Perry a 3-1 winner. He's got a chance here after a misjudged safety from Trump. And the way this match has been going, he's got One. to capitalise on it now. Six.
สัตว์Whether here at the Rico Arena or for the nine years prior to that at Crondon Park in rural Essex, there have never been spectators allowed in at the Championship League. 20. But next week, these two could be meeting in a very different setting, in front of two and a half thousand people at the Tempodrome in Berlin. Because if Perry beats Udalu next Wednesday afternoon, and then Trump beats Ben Wollaston that night, the two of them will face each other in the last 16 of the German Masters. Twenty-eight. Thirty-five. It's actually been a reasonably good season for Perry. Just a couple of quarter-finals, the Riga Masters, the first ranking event of the season, and more recently the UK Championship, the biggest ranking event of the season so far. Also had a couple of last 16 finishes. And he's generally been getting through the first couple of rounds of tournaments. Pretty good going to only have one first round defeat. That was against Yuan Sijun oh. at the English Open in Barnsley in October. Forty one. He's been struggling position, struggling for position for a few shots now, and in the end, that's why the break has ended on 41. Joe Perry, 41. Pass. Joe Perry, four. straight back in after a fairly loose shot from Trump comes back to the table already with a 46 point lead One. Sixty points in front then, just this simple red. Fourteen. We'll leave Trump needing a snooker.
22. Forty-six, forty-seven, fifty-four. Remarkably, in eight completed matches today, we've still not had a decider. That's the only way Perry can win this match now, and he's kept his hopes alive. He's won the third frame comfortably. Judd Trump still leads, but now it's 2-1. On the other table, Ben Wollaston in a fairly commanding position in frame three against Ricky Walden. 56 in front, but still 67 left, so still hope for Walden. Three-time ranking event winner, former World Championship semi-finalist Walden. Five years ago now, since he was beaten by Barry Hawkins for a place in the World Final. Hawkins, who incidentally should have been in this group, and if you're wondering why you haven't seen him, well, he's got the flu, and he had to get off his sickbed to play in the Masters, and actually played okay, still lost in the first round to Kyron Wilson, but uh, then decided not to come here, try to recover Friendly. before going to the German Masters next week. Both of these men will be going to Berlin too. They're often running in frame four here. Six. Seven. Now, is he going to go straight into the bunch this early? He is. Decent enough split. Now, what's he on? Well, that's okay. He's on this red to the corner. Twelve. Thirteen. 
13. Well, that fast start he made in the previous group, Judd Trump had us heading for the record books to see what was the smallest number of frames any player has ever lost in the round robin section of a championship league group. And we were looking at them again this time after the start he made today. 18. But having lost that previous frame, he's now lost two in this group, so 19. the best he can do is equal the record, which was set by John Higgins in 2014. He's got a chance to clear the black spot here, but he's nudged the black into the pack. Twenty six. I think the black goes to the left corner. So if you can get it back in its spot, and really help his chances of turning this into a frame winning break. 31. Something of a trademark Trump shot that. 44. Arguably a little unfortunate to kiss the green. Certainly got plenty of pace into the cue ball, but for that he may well have come back round and landed on something. It was a big ask though, but still 44 point lead, pretty useful. To Trump, 44. It is extraordinary what I was mentioning earlier that we haven't had any of the first eight matches go 3-2. Best of fives, you do expect a lot of deciders and you do get a lot of deciders. But of the eight matches completed so far today, seven have been 3-1 and the other one was 3-0. One. Maybe this is going to be 3-1 now. Really should close it out from here. And if he does, that'll Seven. be three wins out of three. Eight. Having won nine frames and only lost two. And he can make absolutely sure of his place Fifth. in the semi-finals by the end of the night. Depending how things work out. Still has another match to play against Mark Williams. That'll follow on immediately after this one. Joe Perry.
can sign off for the night now. He'll be back at 11 in the morning to play Ricky Walden and he'll go into the second day of the group with only one win from three, so needs an improvement tomorrow. So no doubt about it now, 73 in front, Third. just 59 left, Thus maintaining the record of this match producing a half century in every frame from one player or the other. It's another pretty impressive performance from Trump. He's flying in this group. Sixty one. Sixty four. So Judge Trump. Sixty eight. Well, we didn't see it there, but I assume he must have fluked the brown into the far corner. So breaks of 96, 64, and then 44 and 68 in the same frame there. Three wins out of three for Judd Trump.